Hello and welcome back to My Mama's Basement presented by Barstool Sports and 3G. We are here to talk about Stranger Things Season 4, Episode 6, The Dive today. Spoilers, obviously, for Episode 6, The Dive. We get straight into it with Papa giving Eleven an explanation he should have given her at the start. Where did this explanation come from uh, out of nowhere here where it's like she was skeptical the whole time about you? Why don't you just tell her right up front? What the fuck? Tell her how you're alive, too, Papa, because I still don't know how Papa's alive. <laughs> to this day, we mentioned it in the last recap. I'm still not sure. It's like 11, actually. Uh, they killed me in season one, but we didn't realize it would get approved to season two, let alone season four. And they just had to bring me back because I was the big, you know, mysterious character from the first season. But, yeah, it, it always does piss you off where it's like if you just said it, explained it from the jump, there would have yeah. never been a problem. No. There would have never been a problem. I loved the intro to Susie in this season where they're like, you know what? She saved us once. Let's go back to Susie. It was had to be inspired by Home Alone, I think. The intro where they're just going up to every person in the house like, is Susie here? And it's just chaos. And it's just like, oh, it's over there. And where's the McAllister? Like that whole thing. Did you get that? Bob, I got the same fucking feelings about that, too. The same vibes. I'm so I'm happy glad. you just put that. We may not agree on all of the greatest foods <laughs> in the world, but damn, that made me feel so good. And it also, like, the millions of different kids, once I realized they were all related, it made me want to throw up as a parent. I can barely <laughs> handle two. I know at some point they say, like, once if you keep having kids or there's, like, an age gap, the older ones start taking care of the young ones. It still just seems so fucking uh, impossible. Even And then even, like, these kids – getting a map out and be like, oh, let's go to Utah based on this old ass map. My wife was like, how did they figure out how to get there? I was like, they had a map. She's like, oh yeah, that's right. Like maps are so distant to us. Map quest was a thing once upon a time. I couldn't imagine doing map quests these days, let alone like anything but my phone that is constantly connected to the internet. Even like an old GPS that you're just relying on shit, not updating. Crazy to me, crazy. And also speaking of Susie, Susie fucking rules i thought i was gonna hate her when they introduced her in season three i fucking love Susan, great man. yeah the I'm fact so that she like felt so guilty about changing the grade that she told on herself and all that she doesn't have the computer anymore so funny what is she called dusty is it just dusty or does she have like another nickname like a schmoopy nickname for him she might have a schmoopy nickname but I, I she calls him dusty a lot i think i'm just so happy that our boy dusty found someone as good as susie yeah. they belong together i hope they're together right now in present day <laughs> and not with like and not a mormon amount of kids but like a, a healthy family like three yeah. or four kids a healthy family yeah um argyle meeting eden so funny the way he was just like hard eyes for her immediately like couldn't even he was fumbling over his own words and i loved that and 11 with the Plinko game where she's dropping the thing. She wants it to go into three. She made that Plinko game look so much fun, look like so much fun. Like I know she's in an asylum and it's like kind of a prison, but I was just like, damn, I want a Plinko game. I want to see if I could get it in three. Plinko is such a great game. It's my favorite yeah. Price is Right game. Is your is it your favorite Price is Right game? Oh, big time. Of course. And listen. I love I love Price is Right in terms of skill, but Plinko is just basically blind luck. Also, my wife made a point. She says Eleven could never get the the uh, chip in number three, and she's like, "Does that mean anything?" I'm like, who the fuck noticed that? Like, my, my my wife's on the sus list now. We're putting her below fuckface and Papa on the sus list, but she's on the sus list nonetheless. Might mean something, yeah. It, it honestly may. That, like the Duffer Brothers, they're in their bag right now. I think we can all agree on that. Other than Plinko, because I think that I think that's the case for most people. What is your favorite Price is Right game? The Wheel. The wheel? Okay, that's a yeah. fair That's a fair one. Mine is the yodeler. I love the yodeler. I love the song. <laughs> I love when it falls off the top. I And it's it's just the best. I fucking I love the wheel. wheel. Because when the wheel hits, when the videos of the wheel actually hitting are electric. People go on yeah. banana when it hits a little tiny one. And it's, it yep. just goes in there. Oh, it's the best. And I don't know if this is a pandemic thing or what. I can't remember the last time I even turned on Price is Right. And I used no, to blog yeah. it like religiously and it's like it doesn't even exist anymore. It's wild how my brain is my like Probably doing been a decade change. for me. Yeah. Jesus. Shout out loud Sean too. Price is right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um two real dick. Just two he has the face of a dick too. I feel bad saying that because it's a, a young kid, obviously. Hope he's not uh my mom's basement dweller. <laughs> But yeah, just as soon as you see his face, you're like, he's going to bully 11. And he does. He bullies 11. He's a dick face. His name is dick face. The other guy's fuck face. <laughs> yeah. This guy's dick face. There's just no way around. You're born with a dick face. You're a dick. It's just how it's going to be. Sorry to tell you. Two. Another note I had, Nancy and Robin. Great duo this season. One of my favorite duos this season. Every episode, I find myself thinking the same thing about that. And another thing, 
th- these episodes are all long. We all talked about how crazy the run times were when they posted it. Yep. They don't feel as long as they are, I don't think. No, it, that's a sign of good TV, I feel, is when yeah. you like, blink your eye, blink again, and then you're like, oh, shit. Now, if you're looking at the clock, now back in the day when it actually mattered because you were watching TV on TV and you knew something else was coming on at 10, but if you're just looking at the clock, you're like, wow, we've been sitting down for a while, and then you pause it. And that's the thing. It's definitely you have to pause it now to see how long you have left, and you're like, yeah. holy shit. And I do appreciate I do appreciate how Netflix, at the end, it's not how long the episode is, but how much time you have left. I like that as well. I appreciate that they do that. So that's like a little niche. They put a beginning end, end, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's yep. the way That's the way to go. It was very funny when they're at the like town hall scene talking about the Hellfire Club as a cult, and they have the picture of them. And it's like, this is who we're going after. This is the least intimidating cult of all the guys. This is nerds. What are we talking about here? I feel like that town hall has like a yearly an annual if not weekly witch hunt like that's just what they do in indiana yeah. i feel like i have to ask vibs like vibs how many people did well, you, you know witch hunt back it's in, in indiana it lines up maybe it's like right next to pawnee from parks and rec where all the citizens are just that dumb oh wow we're going at the indiana listeners hard today huh bob Pawnee is a fictional this, town come on <laughs> so is hawkins so is hawkins but I, I, honestly if you tell me that like they're doing witch hunts in Indiana, like as we're like someone, a basement boy is like, dude, I just got back from witch hunt and I'm watching you guys now. I'm not going to be too surprised. I just feel like that's <laughs> what they do out there in Indiana. Again, I feel like it's like they would never do it to people that look quote unquote normal. It's like if you're a nerd or a little bit of a freak, you have, like they probably were ready to hunt Eddie just because he has, he has long hair as a man below his like shoulders. Oh, yeah. Like witch, kill him, kill him. I, I hate it that the fucking, uh, like when the townspeople and it was all quiet and you're like, oh, they're not buying it. And then they're like, let's fucking go. I was like, no. The one and, guy, yeah. Yep. And the cops, the cops being in on this too. Like they're the same cops from season one I just uh, found out. And it is kind of funny. It, it just feels very Indiana to me. Is Eddie Munson Eddie Munster? Is that like a reference to Eddie Munster? Every time they say it, I think about that. My wife thought the same thing, but the Munster's last name is Munster. So I don't know if they're yeah. trying, you they know, changed it a little bit. And then Munson, I always think of Kingpin, but I don't think he's he's Roy Munson in Kingpin, so it has nothing to do with Kingpin, which would be a weird tie in there. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you on that. That'd be a very weird tie. Yeah, uh, the American Tendo scene is funny. I like the American Tendo. Yes, I kept talking about that. The compass scene I thought was very clever, where they're like, "Oh, I didn't realize where Skull Rock was," not because. I have my directions wrong because the compass is not pulling north anymore. It's pulling to the different gravitational pole now. Chekhov's flamethrower. We had a flamethrower mentioned. Oh, I have a flamethrower. I was like, okay, Th- uh, write that down. And then I don't even know what my final note means. Holy sh- heck. Did someone say that at some point? I think I think one of the kids might have said it around the parents. I could be wrong, but that sounds Maybe. that that might check out there. Um, that 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 might have been yeah. Holy shit, heck yeah! I just yeah. I wrote that down as a, something that made me laugh, but I don't remember the context of it. My Turns in my head, bad. yeah. Well, welcome to the fucking club. I'm forty, and <laughs> like, again, that's the other thing I've noticed in the last two years. A lot of brain cells have just kind of just been like, yeah. I'm out of here, deuces. It might be the friggin' yeah. Yeah, there it is. Tobacco <laughs> use only. My <Mind> flare <laughs> indeed. <laughs> I I could personally do without seeing the piece, the faces of the people killed by Vecna. That's just not oh great. yeah. My working theory as of right now is Vecna is Barb. Uh, I haven't mentioned Barb <laughs> nearly enough on this uh, breakdown so far, but I've had multiple theories about Barb being like the big bad and all this, which is kind of hilarious how big she was back in the day. Um, yeah. She was like, became like the justice for Barb. Everyone. Yeah. Doing the, and I was so much. Like, I thought she stunk as a character. Yes. Thank you, Bob. I fucking. We might have the, the justice for Barb people come after yeah. us now, but they, they probably. Stunk. They're probably gathering in Indiana right now, ready to hunt us anyway, right? She so, was just annoying. Yeah. She was the worst. I, I didn't feel the least bit bad. She was just annoying, if anything. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of mentioned the Hopper storyline. Starting to get a little tired of the 11 storyline, too. It's like, all right, tell us what the fuck happened. Yeah. Or shut the fuck up. 11, <sighs> she's not on the sus list. It just looks really bad for her every single time they go through this thing. But they keep like reliving the day. Like, it's like, I just don't I don't need to see this shit anymore. I've just had enough of it. Um, another thing I hate, I hate that I'm starting to love Steve after what he did to Nancy. Because I was so I was hashtag done with Steve in season one. Wow. Because what he did to what my sweet Nancy yeah. Wheeler, 
still makes a man to this day just thinking about, i can't even I watch forget about that like i forget that he was that guy yeah it's like yeah it's like a complete character change right at yeah. its core and he's done a ton of stuff in the last few seasons to make like wipe that away both like good stuff helping the kids out and just like you just realize he's not a bad person you read nancy wheeler as a slut on like the cinema in town in indiana of all <laughs> yeah, places forgot like, about that ah, yeah. I'm so fucking mad right <laughs> Is that now. the biggest character change heel to face or face to heel or, since, or, hulk guess, hogan. since hulk hogan that, since hulk hogan but what's the biggest one since then is it nate the great it might be it might be yeah. that, nate, and, nate, nate the ooh. taint you want to talk about someone I loathe right there. Oh, Nate the fucking taint. Nate the don't fucking even get me started. Nate the snake is what I call him. Don't even get me started. By the way, did you see my tweet the other day where my wife, uh, I saw a snake slither in the garage. Yeah, I, I did and, see this. <laughs> and my wife, my wife was like, oh yeah, there was this, I saw a dead snake in the garage a couple of like years ago. And I was like, why didn't you tell me? She's like, oh, it was only like, it wasn't big. It was only a foot. I'm like, oh, by the way, if you, if you think a foot's uh, not that big, that's a good thing for me. And uh, I was like, a snake is a snake. You just don't tell someone that snakes could be in their house. What the fuck was that, Bob? Sus list. Life Clem, is definitely I, on the sus list. Clem, I got a very similar situation. I'm going to pick up the computer here, and I'm going to go for a walk with you. I woke up to something today. My girlfriend's on a business trip, and I was like, why is there a book on our floor? She she trapped a spider under something and left it for me to kill. She knows that's her job. I'm not into spiders. So... <laughs> The girls ep- might have to be on the sus list. <laughs> You're all right. Both the, the basement girls are on the sus list now. I'm sorry, both the basement them. ladies. What are they, what are they leaving for us here? Spiders and snakes, Clem. And I, you know, what? I'm I don't fear snakes. I'm not an anti snake guy. AJ says he's. Allergic. I'm not really an anti snake guy either. Right, but when you see them, it fucks you up. Because I saw a spider in. too that I killed, and it, this is the worst part. I kill the spider, and then I like throw the tissue in the toilet, flush the toilet. Half an hour later, go back into the bathroom. The spider is dead, but it had just come back up. Like the body's haunting me. It went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and the and it's a bitsy spider went up the toilet again. Yeah. Wow. I <laughs> you fucking lived a fucking childhood <laughs> riddle, or, or I guess I, I basically woke up in the upside down today and had to run my way out of it to live forever. That's an adorable note. That's the only thing that makes you feel good is your old spider with like the sad face. But our guy Bob <laughs> yeah. Fox, every episode is like, I'll tell you, didn't have to do with these spiders and these I bugs. No, this, this is this is true, and people are gonna take my man card away. She usually does kill bugs in the apartment. I think she uh, was just maybe in a rush, or I don't know. The best thing in life is the 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 best part about life in this world we live in now is the female empowerment. And it does yeah. allow, like, my wife will will kill. I'm, I'm good with bugs, but if there's, like, a potential, like, rodent issue or something, I'm like, we could do this together. But we're both doing this. This yeah. is a teamwork. Like, you know, you want to vote, woman? Equality. You better help me with the math. <laughs> the suffrage, you guys want suffrage in the year 2022? <laughs> I will say I absolutely love that. And, like, sometimes she'll just, like, fix stuff around the house. And it's like, that would have been the quote-unquote guy's duty in the past. It is the best. Um but like there are also roles that have to be played. And if she knows you're scared of bugs, she has to take care of the bugs. The fact she left you that note is like, I'm getting the fuck out of here for a business trip. <laughs> yeah. Peace, you fucking loser. You have to handle this. That's fucked up, man. That's not good. So snakes and spiders. And again, I'm not a, like, I, I don't fear spiders, fear snakes. You fear spiders. Take care of the spiders, Lady Fox. What the fuck's going on here? Not yeah, great. Not a great look. Great. That was all I had for the penultimate episode. Did you have anything else? Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see another thing about another thing about Steve. I never thought I would forgive him. Never thought I would wish anything but death upon him. And now I was like, you know, by the end of this, when he goes through the gate, I'm like, Steve, be all right. Oh, yeah. that was the other thing. Oh, two things. One, it happened in this episode. It bugs me in everything. People can't see clearly when they open their eyes underwater unless they have a mask on. And I, it gets me so fucking mad. You can see the blurriness. I open my eyes underwater all the time in the pool. Do you? No. Oh yeah, chlorine I get in your eyes. No, it doesn't bother me. Chlorine doesn't bother me at all. Like if if I open them and I it starts burning, I'm like, oh, they have a lot of chlorine in here. But I love opening my eyes underwater. But you can't see shit, so stop acting like you can. <laughs> Television and movies, all right? Hollywood. Uh, and then the other thing was, oh, Steve. My wife is like, how old do you think Steve is? In do real you, life? Yeah. Twenty five. Thirty. Whoa! <laughs> the big three zero. So that I wouldn't guess that. No, he looks pretty young. He's still ten years younger than my old ass. But like you thought he was like your age, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? And no, 
Steve, and he's playing like a just out of high schoolish. And I all these kids yeah. are aging up just just the way it is. But uh, shout, I guess shout out to him and like his like moisturizing products because pretty <laughs> youngish. Like Jonathan seems like he could be my age. He seems like forty. Jonathan. He he's living that hard life. He seems like yeah. someone who like inside yeah. rooms where they smoked a lot inside. He looked forty in season one. Yeah, he did. And he was supposed <laughs> to be in high school. Yeah. And by the way, Jonathan just straight up not giving a fuck about his photography at NYU. Just threw that out the window. Probably because he's mm. poor and his house keeps getting ransacked and destroyed. He's but, like got um, no future at this point. Yeah, exactly. So Tough. he doesn't give a shit about age. All right, leave your favorite moment in the comments below. My favorite moment from this episode, probably the Home Alone sequence, actually, because it, it just looked like gave me that warm feeling inside like oh my god this is home alone this okay my favorite scene actually we didn't even mention my favorite scene but it was hopper realizing that they're feeding them to then feed them to the demogor or whatever the fuck is gonna Forgot be about there that. that was the hopper scenes as the season went along hopper scenes got better yes agreed and this is my question to you now bob what would be your last meal if you a midway cheesesteak from the jersey shore boardwalk oh I love a Midway cheesesteak. Bob, my fucking guy. Um, when I went to prom, we went to Seaside. And I think I ate seven cheesesteaks that weekend. <laughs> they are the greatest fucking food of oh, all time. And I will so not good. dispute fucking anyone choosing a Midway cheesesteak as their final Uncle, year. Uncle Fun, I'm wearing his hat right now. My Uncle Den. Um got a midway cheesesteak earlier this morning might be why it's fresh on my mind but i've said that for years like oh my god if i'm on the electric chair and they give me one final meal give me a midway cheesesteak it's funny i've obviously i've aged out of and you know i've aged out of being a seaside guy we do the wildwood now we're kind of we do some delaware trips and stuff to some nice beaches and it's a little more quiet with the kids but i have thought in the past can I maybe just swing by Seaside real quick and just get a like just go that whole that way just for the Midway cheesesteak? It is that fucking good. Anyone going to Seaside at all during the summer? I've driven down for a Midway cheesesteak. Hour You've and done a half. It? Oh, Jersey yeah. boy, just oh, doing yeah. it. Oh, Jersey corn too. Mwah. Great fucking sweet so corn. I love. Yeah. I'm a big corn. You're a big corn in the cob guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huge corn in the cob. I have I, some in the fridge right now. There's a rip off Nando's that I found in Jersey City when I came back from England. I was like, I gotta find some peri peri chicken, <laughs> and they they do peri peri corn where it's like kind of like spicy corn. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's some good shit, man. I guess my my go to meal would be. Uh, it's tough to do because it's not like a like Midway is you get that at Midway, but it's like a, a homemade spaghetti meatballs. Like oh, kind of like yeah. we were talking last. Maybe I'm gonna have to try Mama Fox's. Maybe Mama Fox will be my my go to. Mama Clem makes a great uh, spaghetti, like a great sauce, even though she's Irish. Papa Clem actually, Papa Clem spaghetti meatballs. That that would be my my choice if I'm going like, you know, not a specific homemade meal. Uh, let's we'll do just do like a. a some pizza from like my local spot. I'm not too yeah, much of a good call. Oh, we load up with some Ben and Jerry's too. Give me some Ben and Jerry's oh, yeah. cookie chunky dough. Monkey? You're chunky monkey guy. I I'm am a, a cookie guy. dough and chubby chubba hubba is actually my, my go, mm. like my number two on the list. So actually there it is. Give us your favorite scene below. Mine was the eating, right? And Bob yours was the home alone, the home alone scene, which was awesome. Give us either your favorite scene or your favorite, your, your meal. If you're on death row for something, mm. you know, dem you're, you're killing people. Demogorgon style. And this was the penultimate, penultimate. part one, uh, you know, of just part one recap. So come back tomorrow for the finale of part one. Recap.